One day she discovered that she was fierce and strong and full of fire, and that not even she could hold herself back because her passion burned brighter than her fears. Women are resilient, women are strong, women are women fighters. Women entrepreneurs and they hold the key to Don't give up, don't country. give in. Established in 2010 by Grasa Michelle, the Grasa Michelle Trust is one of the world's leading advocates for women's and children's rights. The Trust has, over the last nine years, worked to multiply the faces and amplify the voices of African women and children. A survey of 21 entrepreneurs in eight financial institutions based in South Africa was completed in order to assess the experiences of women entrepreneurs in accessing finance and the nature of investor readiness. The purpose of such a study is to strengthen advocacy and better support women entrepreneurs as they navigate the world of investment and business financing practice. I'm proud to run an engineering business that supplies and installs quality electrical, mechanical, civil, power generation, and distribution building services throughout South Africa. One of my greatest challenges in accessing finance was the complexity of the process, and when I signed someone to assist, having to pay this middleman 3 to 5% of the value of the investment on top of the loan interest. How could I possibly afford that? I have worked hard tapping the biotech industry with a focus in the development of the ethnic hair and scalp care systems, as well as agro-processing that is responsible for sourcing and extracting our indigenous ingredient alpha. For me, one of the difficulties has been the request from institutions for feasibility studies from registered bodies. The cost of these is in the region of 120,000 Rand, with other market analysis surveys requested costing between 10 and 15,000 Rand. How is that even affordable when I could conduct the research myself and present feasibility based on what I know of my business and potential clientele? Having worked to build a consulting firm that works within the building environment industry within and outside of South Africa, one of the biggest difficulties is the expectation from government institutions that they fund 80% of the loan and I the other 20%. Where would I raise this outstanding capital, especially without access to property as collateral? I operate my business in a very technical environment, supplying quality parts to Sodesi and Ford Motor Company in South Africa. Parts that ended up in the acclaimed T6 Ranger. My observation has been that, particularly in a technical field such as my own, that the barrier to entry is high. Obtaining investment is a difficult exercise of knocking on door after door with a coupled pressure to demonstrate capability as a woman and a technical expert. For years I have worked on a business that enhances the development of solar powered solutions and energy savings in South Africa, Italy and Middle East. A key experience for me was that financial institutions tend to create a perception that women owned businesses and small, medium, micro enterprises are not able to achieve, especially at the development and elementary stages of business. My dream for my fabric house is to provide consumers with contemporary designs from Africa and the rest of the world. My greatest stumbling block has been the lack of understanding of government officials of the textile industry. They were unable to process my application for funding due to the lack of expertise and understanding of what I was trying to achieve with wholesale fabrics. It seems that I am now needing to manufacture in order to gain access to finance. How do I afford this kind of diversification without capital? Within the renewable energy space, government funding bodies will only award 
100% grant if the company is 100% black owned. This becomes difficult in my space with our technology, which is photovoltaic thermal, as additional investors are needed and required, and they are predominantly white or foreign. How do I raise what I need to attract the investors if government policy constrains manufacturing in the renewable sector? Extended challenges include slow, cumbersome internal processes within many of the government funding bodies. Development infrastructure projects are time sensitive and I lost out on project work because of it. Technical projects have specific funding requirements at certain points. Delays in receiving tranches significantly impact one's ability to deliver. I'm the sole business person in my family. This means that 70% of what I make goes back to the family. A woman is expected to develop a product, market it, sell it, do the admin and then go home to cook and care for the family. The system needs to be aware of the obstacles women entrepreneurs uniquely face and look at the psychosocial support programs along with other programs to assist in financial health and overcoming the burden of care, or black tax as it is commonly called. Government support for black female businesses is a scam, as short, women face continued financial support did not even read the application needed. with a regret like letter that was sent a week later. Knocking and door after door after door. And advice needed by the SMMEs. So what does this all mean? Key findings gleaned from the women indicate four primary issues. The cost required to access finance. Requirements being inequitable. Turnaround to process applications too long. And black tax or the burden of care coming at a significant cost. Comments from the financial institutions indicated that women often demonstrate a lack of commitment to their product, service, or concept and juggle side hustles or multiple businesses. Secondly, they lack in various degrees when it comes to networks. Thirdly, they need to operationalize financial literacy, understanding the language of deal makers and ensuring their financial records are intact and optimized. Lastly, institutions highlighted the need for women entrepreneurs to align equity and risk. They needed to put skin in the game. Additional investor readiness strategies are required. An increase in investment literacy with supply and demand matching will be invaluable. Greater understanding of investment trends will go a long way in taking us further. A greater need for mentorship. Further financial literacy will mark the way. Such gratitude to Graka Marshall and the Women Creating Wealth program who have begun to provide all those things. We so appreciate that the Graka Marshall Trust to Women Creating Wealth South African cohort for encouraging us women entrepreneurs to own who we are, why we are doing what we do, and how we can apply our vision to positively impact the business world. Thank you to Grassa Marshall Trust Women Creating Wealth for the fellowship on this solitary journey of entrepreneurship. GMT added value long after the project. We still continue to support women entrepreneurs with their needs and with support for access to market. 
My key takeaway from the experience with GMT is women are resilient, women are strong, women are fighters, and they hold the key to changing the fate of our country. For all the women entrepreneurs out there, don't give up, don't give in. Remember the dream, the reason, and take each step, each day, with purpose and dignity. And one day, she discovered that she was fierce and strong and full of fire, and that not even she could hold herself back because her passion burned brighter than her fears.